fountain of life. A collection of live recorded sermons from His Grace Bishop Emilianos Maloa aiming to make us fountains of the Holy Spirit. Here is today's message. Today I wanted to tell you just a couple of things, two points um, regarding the gospel of the day. So Jesus went and he asked water from a Samaritan woman. And the woman is wondering why a Jew asks water, asks for water from a Samaritan. And Jesus tells her, if you knew the gift of God, so it is a gift when God asks us to do something for him. We think that if we help someone that is in need, if we stand by the people we know, our relatives or our friends or, or our someone unknown fellow men, if we put some effort for the church or if we do a good act, we think that we offer something. We offer nothing to no one. The Almighty God has no need from our good words, has no need from our million dollars, has no need of anything. The same way when Jesus asked water from the Samaritan woman, it was not because he was thirsty and if he wouldn't be able to drink some water, he would faint. He asked water to ask a door of salvation to, for, towards Fotini and to everyone around Fotini, who's the name of the Samaritan woman. And if you're not ready, of course, if you're not ready to give everything to your fellow men, then you don't fulfill Christ's commandment to give everything that you hold, to give everything that you would keep for yourself and you would use for yourself, to give everything that you find difficult to give, everything that you want, you find difficult to be apart from and you want to hold it tight so no one will take it away from you. This could be your house, could be money, could be your rest, could be your friendships, could be the plate of food that you have in front of you, could be your ego, could be your, your authority that makes you upset and wants you and makes you to poison with your words and acts the fellow man that God has put in front of you. If you are not ready to set yourself apart from all these and give the happiness and the security that you would keep for yourself to your brother, then you don't keep Jesus' commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. But even if you do exactly this, you will benefit more than the one who will accept your good act. And this is because you will give water, and as the Gospel says, you will receive the Holy Spirit. You will give clothes, and you will put on Christ. You will comfort a hurt soul, and you will become Son of God Almighty. So, who has more benefits? The one who received your help, or you that, by supporting someone in need, you end up in communion with the Holy Trinity. The scripture says, whoever shows mercy to the poor, lends to God. So when the humankind was at fault with the disobedience and the ungratefulness with Adam and Eve, then Jesus ended up giving his blood and life for them, for us. We were to blame and he benefited us. How much more will he give in return to the grateful, to the obedient and to the ones that he owes to because according to the scripture as we said, by showing mercy to our fellow men, you lend to God himself. And now my second point from the gospel and I will read the part from the gospel that I will talk about. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and he whom you now have is not your husband. This you said truly. The woman said to him, 
Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So the Samaritan woman did, could not care less that Jesus revealed her sins. She did not try to find excuses, react, or even attack him. Her ego was not hurt. She was happy that she found the answer to her spiritual problem, where the right place to worship God is. This is what she wanted to know in her spiritual life. And out of this joy and happiness, she went and she preached that Jesus revealed her dirty laundry. And she ended up later on in her life becoming a martyr and a saint. So if we are disappointed from the abasement and the bad state of the ugliness of our soul from our sins and everything else we do wrong, sometimes it means that we just keep turning back to our own self. It proves that we had an idea for ourselves, for our acts, and the understanding of the ugliness of our acts has disturbed the nice picture that we have painted inside us for ourselves. And it is expected to be sad about it. How did I do such and such thing? The problem is not the sadness about our state. The problem is this ego of mine, which is the reason of our sadness, the root of this specific sadness. So I turn back to myself. I turn to myself while I do something, before I do something, while I do something, and even afterwards. The problem in paradise with Adam and Eve was not the disobedience and the sin. It was, of course, Adam and Eve sinned, but if afterwards they did not try to cover their act and their selves, they would have not lost paradise. It's the same with us. As soon as we realize our misery, instead of forget about ourselves and turn towards to our Creator who can save us, we turn back to ourselves and we are occupied with ourselves, occupy ourselves with ourselves. We find excuses and we try to cover our acts. Jesus does not care whose fault it is, Eve's or the snake's, but Adam, he did not blame just Eve, but through Eve, he blamed God himself that gave him Eve as a helper. Christ does not care whose fault it is and how much and in what extent. So what Christ cares about is after the disaster that we create inside us and around us, not to waste ourselves looking for untrue reasonings and try and cover ourselves behind fig leaves or behind our own finger, but to turn towards our Savior, Jesus Christ, who's our, own, who's our only hope. Then, in a strange and miraculous way, all our faults, all our misery, will not create disappointment or anything else inside us other than joy and happiness. There will be no depression about, about what happened. And the joy and the happiness will not be because we damage the image and likeness of God, but it will be because the worse we are, the more glory goes to our, to our all-merciful God who accepts and will sanctify us. God from charcoal can create diamonds. This is what happened with the Samaritan woman. So the Samaritan woman, instead of turning back to her own mistakes and sins, she ran and preached that she found the Savior. And instead of keep being a sinner, she ended up being a saint. Now Jesus, knowing her good intentions, 
beforehand. He spoke to her about the living water, which is the Holy Spirit, something that he did not even say to his own apostles. Jesus knew which soul to approach, the same way he knows why he created each one of us. So when our Lord enlightens our intellect to understand ourselves, then we find ourselves in a dilemma, a very crucial point in our spiritual life. We have to choose either defending our ego, ourselves, our sins, or to gladly accept our low state, forget about ourselves, and turn towards God. Our self-justification will give us spiritual death, but when we turn towards God, we will inherit eternal life. When